Hi, this is Meg with Case Fleet. This tutorial covers how Case Fleet can help you organize your next book, screenplay, podcast, investigation, or article. We'll cover the key concepts of Case Fleet and explore how to organize a detailed chronology of events, outline your cast of characters, review and cite evidence that can be used to shape and validate your story, analyze a variety of themes, arcs, plots, subplots, character timelines, and more, and access all the critical components of your story from anywhere and at any time. Through this video, you'll see how Case Fleet empowers you to bring together all the building blocks of your story into an organized chronology of events that grows organically and is linked directly to supporting documentation. When you first log into Case Fleet, you'll be taken to the dashboard page. If you're in a free trial, you'll notice there are three cards at the top of your screen, providing a link to our sample chronology, a place to invite collaborators to join your free trial, and a countdown of how many days are left in your free trial period, along with a link to subscribe. If you're an existing customer of Case Fleet, your dashboard page will start with a list of recently accessed projects called Cases, as well as any upcoming and past due tasks to which you are assigned. When you're ready to start a new case or project in Case Fleet, simply click the Create a Case button here. You can also create a new case from the Cases screen accessible via the vertical menu on the left. The Case homepage provides a quick overview of your case information, including a brief description field, an area for uploading any relevant files or documents, and a list of the most recent sources added to your project or case. The Facts tab is where your timeline of events lives. From this page, you can add facts directly to your chronology, toggle between a chronology and a timeline view, analyze themes, character storylines, and other details using Case Fleet's robust filters, and more. Each fact event in your timeline can be given a specific date and time, down to the second, linked with any relevant contacts or characters in your story, and tagged with whatever themes, plot lines, or other categories you choose. If you want to cite documentation or evidence for the fact, you can associate it with a document here or create your facts directly from the document reviewer, which we'll cover later in this video. As you can see, Case Fleet helps you create a relational database of the various elements of your story so you can quickly narrow down to the specific data set of what happened when, who was involved, why it matters, and how it's proved. The Contacts tab is where you compile the cast of characters for your story. The Issues tab is where you'll create the tags that help organize the various timeline events for filtering and analysis. Sources is where all the documents or other file types you upload to Case Fleet are stored and organized. The Uploads tab is an add-on that enables uploading collections of documents and email archives in bulk. For standard and enterprise users, the Search tab provides a central place for finding keywords throughout the entire case file, not just across documents, but also in facts, issue tags, tasks, contacts, and comments as well. The Tasks tab is a place to create tasks for yourself or others you're collaborating with on the case. And finally, the Reports tab is where you would create your work product. After you create a new case in your account, our recommended workflow is to start setting up your case by uploading relevant documents or sources of evidence, creating issue tags, adding the relevant contacts, then starting to build a timeline of facts linked to those elements. First, let's start by visiting the Sources tab, which is where you would upload any relevant documents into Case Fleet. This is particularly helpful if there are specific details or events that you want to validate with evidence. For instance, if you're writing a historical novel, there may be primary or secondary sources you want to reference in your timeline to provide context to your story. You can upload files by dragging and dropping them into the Upload field, or by using the Select Files button. There are two phases to uploading documents into Case Fleet. The first phase is the initial upload of the document into your account, seen here. Document upload speeds in this step will be dependent on how fast your internet connection is. The second step is processing, where Case Fleet prepares your file for our document reviewer. The processing portion works pretty quickly behind the scenes, and you can leave this screen and work on other tasks in Case Fleet without interrupting this process. While our documents are processing, let's work on adding the other building blocks of our case. Issue tags provide a flexible way to organize the various facts of your story. They can be used to help identify plot holes or to quickly review specific themes or sub-themes throughout your narrative. In Case Fleet, you can use standalone or unassigned issues or group sets of issues as a claim. 
In a legal setting, a claim indicates what you're trying to prove, and the underlying issues are the various elements of that claim. Similarly, a journalist or fiction writer can use claim groups in CaseFleet to help categorize groups of related events throughout a complex storyline. Let's say I'm just getting started and I want to build out my high-level plot points. First, I'll create a claim called Plot Structure and add underlying issue tags for rising action, climax, falling action, etc. As you can see, each of these elements can be color-coded to differentiate them visibly in my timeline. Unassigned issues are simply tags that don't fit cleanly into a specific claim category, but that we still want to use to organize our facts. You see here that I have the example of key facts, symbolism, and physical description as unassigned issue tags in this case. Moving on to the Contacts tab, this is where you'll keep track of the cast of characters in your story. Here's an example of the cast of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. To add a new contact, I'll click this button in the upper right. If it's a new contact who hasn't been added to Case Sleep before, you'll want to add their information here. I would add a first name, last name, and then a contact role. I can also assign a contact to the case who already exists in Case Fleet. Click the button up at the top that says Select Existing, then choose from any contact already existing in my Case Fleet account. It's helpful to note that contacts can be persons, places, or things, and you can create custom role tags to help organize them as needed for this particular project or case file. For example, here I've added the characters, human and otherwise, important locations and other essential features of Jack London's The Call of the Wild as contacts in Case Fleet. This will be especially helpful later on as I review the timelines of specific characters and elements, look for possible plot holes, and analyze the various pieces of my story outline. Now that I've created issues to help organize my timeline and added contacts for my various characters and other key elements, I'm ready to start creating a timeline of facts. There are several ways to create facts in your story timeline depending on your specific project. If you're working on a highly biographical or historical project, for instance, you may want to create facts that relate back to specific pieces of evidence uploaded to your Sources tab. A fiction project, on the other hand, may not require citing a specific document as proof. Uncited facts can be easily created directly on the Facts tab of your case. Simply click the Create Fact button and enter the relevant information into the form that appears. In the Fact field, enter the information you want displayed in your timeline event. If you'd like to link a contact to the fact, use the at symbol and a list of contacts from your case will appear. Next, add any relevant issue tags along with a date and time if relevant for the event. Your fact list is automatically organized chronologically, so ordering will be determined by the date and time assigned. Fuzzy date types can also be used to help maintain chronological order when a fact occurs before or around a certain date or time. Comments are used for making notes or communicating about a particular fact with a collaborator. You can also create facts that are linked to specific passages of text using the Document Reviewer. Let's go back to the Sources tab. Once your documents have completed processing, you'll click the Launch Reviewer button to open the document and start analyzing and creating facts from it. Here's an example of a document opened in our Document Reviewer. The menu for the Document Reviewer runs across the top of the screen. Among other things, you can bookmark specific pages in a file for quick navigation, view a list of all locations cited to facts within this specific document, see which pages have been viewed or jump to a particular page, and edit information for the source record, including changing the name of the document in CaseFleet without altering the original file name. There's also a place to zoom and rotate the page, navigate back and forth from one document to the next in your sources list, and more. For standard and enterprise accounts, our Document Reviewer platform also includes full text search, which you can access here, or by using Control F. You can search for an exact phrase, find words in proximity to each other, as well as use Boolean and wildcard searches to find exactly what you're looking for within that document. The Document Reviewer in CaseFleet is used to analyze your relevant sources of evidence and create facts directly linked to those documents. In the reviewer, you can easily create facts by highlighting text. You'll see that what you've highlighted appears in the fact box. From here, you can tag a particular contact, add a date for the event, assign any relevant issues, etc. Notice that additional citation details populate automatically indicating the location of the highlight in that document. Highlighted text will be automatically copied to both the fact and source text fields. 
If you'd prefer the text not be copied to the fact automatically, uncheck the box at the very bottom of the Create New Fact pane. When you're done creating your fact, click Save. Now, when I return to the Facts tab, it will include the fact that I just created along with a citation to the document it was created from. I've jumped back to my The Call of the Wild project in order to illustrate what a case fleet chronology looks like once you've created facts from your evidence, as well as to illustrate how the filters and reporting options work. Using filters allows you to drill down to specific subsets of information so you can better analyze the various elements and plot lines of your story. When I click on the filter button here, you'll see I have the option to quickly hide undated facts and filter my chronology by a specific time period. Below this, I have the ability to apply a series of other filters based on information I've added to my file. Facts can be filtered by related issues, claims, and contacts, the source they reference, and any applied source tags, the date a fact was input into Case Fleet and by whom, by doing a word search for the fact text, and more. It's important to note that I can also stack my filters together to more precisely locate the information I'm looking for. For instance, if I would like to look at all the events tagged as rising action that took place at Daya Beach, which I've logged as a contact, that involve the character Curly, I simply put the information here. You can see that I very quickly filtered my timeline down to four facts from 73 total facts. Once I filtered my chronology, I have the option to save the result as a view, which will allow me to quickly reference the same information at a later time without rebuilding the filter. If I click the Generate Report button, the filters I've set on the Facts page will be carried over to the Reports tab of my project file. Now I can print a report in a variety of formats. We have seven options to choose from currently, and the report will be filtered the way I have selected. Printing a report in Case Fleet is easy. I simply select the report type I would like, click Generate, and then decide whether I would like to include a zip file of the related documents or source parentheticals. When I generate the report, it will appear at the bottom of the screen where I can download it to my desktop. Hopefully, this tutorial has helped give you a good intro into how Case Fleet can be used for storytelling creation and as an analysis tool. If you have questions, please email us at support at casefleet.com or message us in-app by clicking the chat icon down here. To schedule a personalized demo, start a free trial, or view other Case Fleet tutorials, links are provided in the description below.